Bonjour, bonjour everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyril and my dog is Guabao. So I've been a stem cell researcher for quite some time and this is why I can tell you about the science about skincare ingredients. And for today's video, I want to talk about um, a sunscreen that is produced uh, in Europe from a Swedish brand and this is the Heavy Mousse, the SPF. And I'm going to tell you why I will not buy this uh, sunscreen. I have a couple of reasons for this. So before I dive into the subject, I just want to tell you what are the filters of this uh, sunscreen. So first we find uh, octocrylene. Octocrylene is mainly a UVB uh, filter. Then we have UVNO A+, which is mainly a UVA type 1 filter and a little bit of UVA type 2. Then we find uh, Evobenzone. Avobenzone is also mainly a UVA type 1 filter. Then we have uh, the beautiful Tinors of S. Tinors of S is an organic filter that is broad spectrum, so it absorbs UVB, UVA type 2 and also UVA type 1. And the last one is UVNOL T150, which is also an excellent uh, UVB absorber and uh, at a very low concentration, it helps to achieve a very high uh, SPF. So if, by just looking at the filters, this is a beautiful combination because you have redundancy, you have several uh, filters for um, UVB. For UVA type 2, you have many one, which is the tinnitus of S, but remember that avobenzone and also uh, UVNO A plus does absorb a little bit of uh, UVA type 2. And with the UVA type 1, you have tinnitus of but also avobenzone, but also UVNO A plus which is a feature that I obviously love. Still, even though the combination of filters is amazing, this is an SPF of 50, but not an SPF of 50 plus, which is, I would say, the first problem that I have. Obviously, because it is an SPF of 50, it is already a very high protection. But if you are um, new to my channel, hello, my name is Cyril, and I only recommend this channel SPF 50 plus, and an SPF of 50 plus, equals SPF 60 or higher. And the reasons is because the higher the SPF is and the less UVB are going to be transmitted in your skin. And of course, when you are choosing your sunscreen protection, you first want to protect your skin for health reasons because you want to protect your skin from uh, cancer, whatever your skin color is. And also for anti-aging purpose, and especially for anti-aging purpose, the less UV are transmitted to the skin, the better. So this is the reasons why I only recommend SPF 50 plus. Also, there is a big difference between an SPF of 30 and an SPF of 50 plus in terms of UVB transmittance. You have twice as less as UVB that is going to be transmitted to your skin and grilled uh, your cells. So this is um, an important point. There's also another factor that is extremely important is that when you are wearing your sunscreen and if you don't reapply, when you are starting with a very high SPF, so like an SPF of 50 plus, the degradation will be less than if you start with a lower mm, SPF. And I'm going to talk about this more at the end of this video, so stay tuned for this. My second problem is that this is a mousse and not a cream or a, a fluid or like a, a milk or something like that. A mousse is composed obviously um, from the, um, the sunscreen, the UV filters with the vehicle, but also from a lot of gas in this one, probably uh, butane if I'm not um, mistaken, but basically uh, it is made of a sort of empty uh, bubbles and the minimum quantity that you need is two milligrams per centimeter square, aka a lot. So usually with a milk or a cream or even a gel, you can use a teaspoon. One fourth of a teaspoon is the absolute minimum just to apply on your face and another one fourth of a teaspoon for your neck. When you are playing with a mousse, you cannot know because um, the quantity will increase because of the gaze, but in reality, it can result with um, under application and therefore you are going to reduce the SPF mentioned on the bottle and also the UVA uh, protection, which is something that I obviously will never recommend you. So it is very difficult with those type of texture to make sure what is the proper quantity that you have um, applied to determine the um, SPF. So 
Here again, this is something that um, I really dislike about it because this is a key point when, with sun protection. And I also know that when you are super busy, when you are working, even though you are not exposed to uh, the sun, what will likely happen is that you are going to apply your sunscreen once or maybe twice uh, per day, but you are not going to apply it uh, constantly. And therefore, if you start with under applying in the beginning, um, eight hours after the SPF resulting from uh, this first application, this first incorrect uh, implication will also result with a lower SPF. Which brings me to the next point. So according to um, AV, this sunscreen is supposed to be long lasting. What I really dislike about this uh, is several things. First of all, when the SPF is determined, but also the UVA protection factors, it is a requirement that those two parameters does not vary for at least for two hours. After two hours, we are in the unknown and we have to believe uh, the brand. And the way that it is um, written on the website, I, I have to say, is very uh, misleading. There is in one part where they more or less tell you that uh, the SPF does not vary for six hours. So basically six hours after you are supposed um, to still have the SPF uh, 50 at the condition, of course, that you have applied the proper quantity, which is more challenging with uh, a mousse texture, like I have said. So again, the long-lasting definition that they, that they gave uh, doesn't mean uh, a lot for me, simply because they don't state the point like uh, something like, for example, it is long-lasting because we know that for six hours in those conditions, the SPF is not going to um, change. I mean, something like that, I, I found that the way it is written is very misleading and I don't like uh, those kind of brands that could make you think that, oh, if you go with one application, you will be completely fine. Even though AV said that the formula is a breakthrough, there is a paper from 2010 that have uh, tested how long the SPF persists on the skin in what they call normal conditions. So normal condition is when the person are not um, doing any sports, so they're not sweating, it is not under um, extreme um, heat. So like in normal condition, I would say when you are not uh, taking a bath, not taking uh, obviously uh, something like a shower, so you don't have any water on, on your skin, you are not sweating, you are not doing um, any sport. And what they have shown in 2010, and this paper has been done by Barrier and all, I'm going to link the my bibliography down, down below. They have shown that after eight hours of application of organic or inorganic sunscreen, so a mineral-based uh, sunscreen that contains titanium dioxide, you have a reduction of 25% of the SPF. So basically, if you have applied in the morning an SPF of 50 plus, so an SPF 50 plus equals uh, SPF 60 or above, so let's take the example of uh, SPF 60, eight hours after, it will result with an SPF of 45. So an SPF very close to SPF. SPF uh, 50. If you start with an SPF of 50, eight hours after you will result with an SPF of uh, 37. So you see why it is um, very important to start with the highest SPF because you know if you forget or you just uh, are not willing to reapply your sunscreen or for whatever reasons, when you start with a higher protection, you still have some decent protection eight hours after. So now if we translate those results um, just after six hours, if you start with an SPF of 50, six hours after, you will have an SPF of 40. But however, if you start with an SPF of 60, six hours after, you will still have an SPF of 48.6. So basically uh, almost SPF uh, 50. So again, you choose a sunscreen with a very high um, SPF. And what is very important in that in those paper, they have used uh, a filter, but also the vehicle of the sunscreen that is uh, very basic and what I, I call uh, old tech, because this is not something that is uh, very uh, innovative compared to um, the amazing sunscreen that we currently have. So to give you an example, such as this one from Ultrasun, this is the face uh, fluid or the Anessa, the Japanese sunscreen, the perfect UV uh, sunscreen skin care ma milk SPF 50 plus. This one leaves a veil on the skin and after eight hours, uh, you can still have the film on the skin. So I'm pretty uh, convinced that this one, the SPF is not going to very much, at least for six hours in what I, 
I call a uh, normal uh, condition. Of course, I don't have uh, the data to demonstrate it, but uh, I do believe that um, this one is pretty hardcore. Another example is this one from Ducre. This is the Mela screen and this is uh, the light uh, cream. This one is also an SPF of 50 that stay a very, very long time on the skin. And I, I know it for the fact because uh, those three have a white cast. The Anessa has a very minimal white cast. You barely see it um, on the skin, but you still have the waterproof uh, then on your skin. If you put uh, water, you still see the amazing waterproof uh, veil of uh, this one. And those two, you still have the light was cast white cast uh, from them that indicate that the SPF is probably lower, but still um, pretty high. Also on a personal note, this sunscreen contain um, octocrylane and I am sensitive to octocrylene in general. If I buy, uh, especially a European sunscreen with octocrylene, I have a problem with it. With the Anessa, for whatever reason, it contains octocrylene, but I have absolutely no problem um, with it. So I don't know if it's because it, uh, the octocrylene that they use it is encapsulated or something like that, but um, it is not irritating on my skin. Also, the way that they sell uh, this uh, sunscreen, I am a little bit uh, so so because some of the um, information that they provide with it is not very accurate. For example, there is one mention on the website that the SPF uh, measure the UVB protection, which is not true. The SPF measure the protection against a sunburn, and we know that the sunburn is mainly due to uh, UVB and also a little bit to UVA. So it is completely incorrect to say that the SPF only protects you from UVB, it protects you mainly from UVB, but also from UVA, but not to the full uh, spectrums, hence why we do need to have a good um, UVA protection. So overall, I have to say that I am uh, not impressed. And this is not the type of sunscreen that I'm going to test and also recommend you because if you are here on my channel, you only deserve uh, the best of my recommendation and this one definitely will not be uh, one of them. So comment down below and tell me uh, if you have any question regarding this uh, sunscreen or if you want me to uh, review uh, other sunscreen. If you like this video, please thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to ring the bell to not miss any of my new videos and to see again my beautiful dog, Sir Guabao. You can also follow me on Instagram. I am Cyril Laurent. I have um, also a lot of content here. I thank you so, so much for watching me and thank you so much again for all your comments and I will see you next time. Au revoir, bye bye.